It's Idaho Local Edition. Brad Pomerantz here. We are in Boise today, joined by Senator Sheree Buckner-Webb. She is the Assistant Democratic Leader in the Idaho State Senate. I want to speak with you about the governor's recent State of the State address. Undeniable, he spent a lot of time talking about education, and even in the Democratic response, their kind of hats were tipped given that focus. What do you make of the governor's... Uh... I'm delighted with okay. the governor's state of the state with regard to education. We realize that education is foundational to everything mm -hmm. that happens in a community. The economy, um, the future of, of our environment is all based on education. So uh, bottom line, educational structure, educational attainment, educational excellence is what's going to drive us. And you forward. talk about education and the economy and the linkage. And one thing I thought was notable is the governor talked about community colleges and how, for example, Eastern Idaho Technical College is looking to transform into a community college. Here in Boise, we're looking to expand the College of Western Idaho. What do you make of those uh, plans? It's amazing, amazing. I remember when we first uh, established the College of Western Idaho, the number of students that have access to education that didn't before um, is just phenomenal. And that will drive our economic security and our growth and development in that more and more, more young people more and more people that aren't young right, people of course. Or have well, access to education and can do it at different times and be able to go forward without a lot of debt. And I want to talk about the new administration in Washington. We can say a lot of things about their focus, but one thing the new administration has talked about is its desire to bring back skilled manufacturing jobs to America from Mexico or China or wherever it may be. If that's the case, those folks need to be trained. Where will they be trained? Community college. Community so, college. Um, and you know, one of the things that I just had a conversation today was about uh, um, apprenticeships. Right. Um, a lot of our unions are trying to bring back apprenticeships. Mm. They never went away, but people haven't been taking advantage of them. People can go to work in an apprenticeship uh, for five years, and their, their debt can even be forgiving. If you, there's a period mm. of time that you're right. in the classroom, there's a period of time you're out there with a the journeyman, and you can l earn a great living. So there's lots of opportunities right. and certifications also. All right, but I'm wondering, can Idaho leverage this moment you have the desire to expand these two institutions you mm -hmm. have a administration in dc that's looking to bring skilled jobs how can we marry that to the benefit of idahoans well i think any any win that we can find with educational attainment mm -hmm. and bringing jobs here you know one of the things that we lost jobs in idaho are unique it's not necessarily what you do on the east coast but it was timber industry right. and mining right. and now we have a lot more restrictions with mining there are a lot of um, remediation things that you have to do a, a uh, mm -hmm. from the top. Timber's not coming back. I worked in the timber industry for 10 years, um, or at least not in the way it was. So people that were generations in the timber industry that were in the trades could go forward. We'll have to do it a little differently. We have to look at what the um, landscape demands what's the growth environment, and it's not all STEM. There are, other, there are other things besides STEM, and I really am pro-STEM, but we need to work with industry, we need to work with businesses, we need to work with our corporations to see what's needed in the work environment and then develop those programs that will prepare people to work in those environments. I want to talk about industry as well because there's been significant discussions about trade and trade policy coming out of Washington. Idaho has significant trading partnerships with China, for example. The governor recently traveled to China. And is there a concern amongst the Democratic caucus or just the legislature generally that with Idaho fostering such strong trade relations that this new trade environment could backfire on the state? Well, I'm hopeful that that won't happen. We have established a long-term relationship with agriculture. And, uh, you know, agriculture is a unique, it's not a, co a unique commodity, right. if you will. And everybody in the world can't grow the things that we can grow here. And right. I hope that that will help set us apart as somebody that really needs to continue to do the work we're doing. And I hope that the national leadership right. will see that. <laughs> Let's talk more about education. Okay. Because the governor in his state of the state focused on higher ed. He talked about K-12, mm -hmm. not a lot of discussion about early childhood education, pre-K. I'm an absolute unequivocal, right. unapologetic proponent of pre-K. Um, you know, we <laughs> only have half-day kindergarten, right. so we would really like to see pre-K. We have looked at the studies over and over again. We've looked at what's happened in other countries to see that preparing children to learn, preparing children for their early on education, earlier the better, the, the more successful they'll be. And Senator, I'm sure you know this,
but Education Week came out with a survey and they ranked states in terms of a variety of categories. Yes. And they talked about pre-K. Yeah. And Idaho came in 50th. That's very true. Yeah. It's one of the few states with no pre-K funding. And I will tell you that my colleagues in both houses have valiantly tried to bring that into uh, to being. I will tell you that it's just in the last couple of years that we started to bring ourselves back up to a funding uh, level right. that we are way behind. For we're, the career we're, ladder we're well behind with the career, la mm -hmm. career ladder. We had been uh, funding at uh, 10 year levels 10 years right. ago. So we're just starting to get our education funding back where it would be. In fact, education funding was the impetus for me to run for office. We had mm. cut education funding for three years, and that's what brought me back in. Uh, we still have a ways to go to get up to parity to 2017 levels, what we propose to be 2017 well, levels. What I'm wondering is, we have a very significant surplus in Idaho, over $139 million. I'd love to see half of that go to education. Right. I mean, $92 million more than we anticipated. So is now the time to seize the moment to talk to the governor, who clearly is an advocate of education, regardless of party. Um, Again, to, I'm yeah. so supportive of what he's done, but I would like him to dig a little deeper. I believe that his goal is to put it into a rainy day fund, some of that money. Mm. I'd like to see it to education. Of course, there are many, many competing uh, priorities that need to be done from transportation, infrastructure, to education, to a lot of things. But I would love to see, because I still believe that education is foundational to our success as a state. So let's talk more about the surplus, because you mentioned a rainy day fund or a separate fund. And we've had the surplus in Idaho for or a few years. Or in savings. Yeah. yeah. We've had this, uh, this surplus for a few years. And over the last couple of years, what we've had is what's known as the surplus eliminator. Which is different, yeah. Which is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what that's doing, it's putting half of the money into transportation. Correct. Another half into, should we call it savings? That's, or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, or at least in a fund that we, yeah. Right. We'd so, like. but the eliminator is being eliminated. It sunsets. It sunsets. Will your caucus or your colleagues generally look to extend it? Because the surplus continues. Many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle would like to see it extended. I'm not sure what will happen yet. I don't think that we've gotten, we've just heard about this um, as he did his bud budget presentation. Right. We haven't had a lot of conversation, at least in my caucus, about proposing what will happen next, but we would like to see it. I really believe in savings. I really right. believe in a lot of things. But there's a formula. But I mean, look. We need to bring some education dollars up still. Still. So do we feel as if, given that transportation was, I'll call it the favorite child, through the, this surplus eliminator, that maybe education should get that benefit? as we look towards future surpluses? Well, there have been a number of studies that have, done, have been done recently. I saw the results of one just yesterday morning that mm -hmm. Boise State University did their, po um, their School of Public Policy. Mm -hmm. And they did this about six months ago. And the two things that were neck and neck from um, a, a sample across the state mm -hmm. were education and health care. Mm -hmm. And one, one study had one above. I mean, they were neck and neck and neck and neck. Then another study came out yesterday, not another study. There was a conference call that went on last night with people across the state, about 500 people on board, and they could weigh in. And health care and education mm -hmm. were neck and neck as the top priority for Idahoans. So if I am strictly being responsive, not to my needs, but for or my wishes, to what the public says, I think that we need to give education a... Idea. And health care is a big question mark given the new administration <laughs> in Washington. When yeah, we come yeah. back, hopefully you'll come back on and we'll talk about the Affordable Care Act. We don't know what's going to happen, yeah. but Idaho is waiting with bated breath. Her name is Sheree Buckner-Webb. She much. is a member of the Idaho State Senate Assistant Democratic Leader. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We're coming to you from Boise on Idaho Local Edition. Thank you.